Welcome! Today we are going to be making some breakfast freezer meals with you. We are super excited to get some of these into our freezers to make those mornings a lot easier. We're going to do some grab and go breakfast and we're also going to do some more brunchy types for weekends. So this is going to be great to have. It really will. I think we have some great recipes planned out. So the first one that we're going to be making is a French toast casserole. Now this is one that we have on our website. We're going to put the link in the description below so that you can grab the full recipe. And it is one that is so nice to have for company or just a Sunday morning brunch. It's really simple and you just use plain white bread for it. So you might even have some of that on hand. So let's just cube the bread. I'm going to get Christy to cube it today. I'm going to be like, oh, you do all the heavy lifting. I will do the heavy lifting. That's just fine. Don't mind me. I Brett, I don't know about you, but I always do mine like in sections. Do you? I've never watched you cube bread. Do you cube it in sections? I do cube it in sections. Because how are you going to do a whole loaf? Our fancy bread place that we go sometimes, you could ask them to slice it lengthwise. I have a oh. recipe. I don't know what it's for. I don't even remember, but you needed long sheets of bread mm -hmm. and you and it said right in the cookbook you could go ask your bakery to do it and I made that recipe I could not tell you for the life of me what it is so if I think of it I'll let you know but um, yeah isn't that weird well they have the big industrial machine which we do not have so we have a Christie <laughs> have a Christie <laughs> would you like it thick slice today or a regular slice <laughs> you're getting what you get exactly so we'll just put this in a bowl and then we're gonna tell you what we're gonna do next And just like that, <laughs> we've got our bread cubed magically by Christy in our bowl. And one of the things that is great about this French toast casserole, it makes it a little bit different than like say our mixed berry French toast casserole, which is also amazing. So you should check that out. But this one, you, ch you can change the flavor based on which coffee creamer you mm. choose. This is the French side, we're in Canada. Um, so this is the French vanilla. French vanilla. What is it? Ironically, French vanilla. Charlotte does actually speak French. So we have French vanilla or vanille francais. See, it sounds so much better in French, right? French vanilla. So if you preferred, you could do it with a hazelnut creamer, Irish cream. There was a maple one. For the record, I'm glad you didn't pick hazelnut. I like to eat hazelnuts. I don't like to eat hazelnut flavored things like Nutella. Yeah. Don't come at me. I don't love it. My mother-in-law brings the hazelnut, the giant one, to my house because I don't have any. And my husband's family doesn't really drink coffee. They drink coffee-like substances that have <laughs> coffee in it that taste like something entirely different. That's fair. <laughs> that, and that's kind of what it is. And so she brings this giant thing of, of hazelnut coffee creamer to my house, and that's okay. And she sometimes forgets it there. She does. I don't think she thinks that I'm going to like use it and enjoy it. I think sometimes she does legitimately forget it. Sometimes I think that she is leaving it so that it's there for her the next time that she comes. I just freeze it. The stuff freezes. Um, if it's not, if, if you've used a bit, you can freeze it in this and it won't like explode your bottle or anything. And so I just freeze it and when she comes next time I thaw it and hopefully send it home with her um, or I put it in a smaller container and freeze that. Now this casserole, it serves about eight, but <laughs> you were telling me. So a lot of people in our freezer meals group on Facebook make this. Somebody in our book club is making it for the first time. So she messaged me and she said, I'm making your French toast casserole. It says it serves eight. Uh, it's gonna be for me and my husband and there's seven teenage boys. Should I make a second one? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> make a second one. And yeah. it does freeze nicely too once you've made it and need to put it in the freezer or you can have leftovers. It's nice. It's very nice for leftovers. Yeah, so if you're feeding eight regular humans, then it's you probably know, fine. it's fine. If you're feeding nine people and seven of them are teenage boys, maybe just double it. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and double it. <laughs> 
Okay, let's get to the rest of this recipe. We're gonna mix together our egg mixture and pour it over top of our bread and then we're gonna show you what happens next. So we have our bread in the bowl and then we're gonna sprinkle on some sugar and some cinnamon and mix that around. Then in another littler bowl, we're going to mix together our milk, our coffee creamer, the eggs, the melted butter, some maple syrup, and vanilla. We are going to drizzle this over the bread, slowly stirring it in. We're gonna fold it in until all of the bread has absorbed all of the liquid. Now, here's where it could be two, one of two ways. You could put this in a bag, in a freezer bag, get out all that excess air, seal it up and freeze it, or you can spoon this right into a casserole dish that you want to use, like, like a disposable foil one or a glass one. You want to spray it with Pam first because this one could be sticky. And you can cover that with foil and get that into your freezer. You could do it either way. We tend to do it in a bag because we need the freezer space, to be honest. We make a lot of freezer meals around here. So when you go to serve this, you're gonna cook it on the day that you serve it so it's nice and piping hot on the table. You are going to thaw it and dump it out of the bag into your casserole dish or just pull out your casserole dish and let it thaw. You're going to sprinkle an oats topping on it and that's just super simple. It is a half cup of oats mixed with a little bit of cinnamon and then sprinkled on top of it. And then you're going to bake your casserole from you're going to bake it at 400 for 30 to 40 minutes until it's golden brown. And then here's my favorite part. You're gonna take more maple syrup and you are going to drizzle it across the top of the casserole and serve it that way. Now, if you know that your guests wouldn't appreciate the extra maple syrup, you can serve it first and have everybody put their own maple syrup on and that's totally okay too. Last Christmas, I had a little bit of an obsession with appetizers in tart shells. <laughs> yes, I remember that. We had a whole video of just appetizers in tart shells. And I think that my favorite ended up being the cranberry brie mm. pecan mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were quite a few that were actually delicious. I didn't love the spinach artichoke right. one. It was a little bit bland. And more salt, more garlic. <laughs> it's yes. like the bruschetta. Um, but I think uh, you and I were talking earlier about there's like a the caramelized blue cheese onion, one. blue cheese mm -hmm. and bacon one. Really good. But we've made it before on, um, not as a freezer meal, but as a right there appetizer where it's on the water crackers. Yes. And it's a better pastry, a better ratio. ratio. Yes. So yeah, that's kind of our decision about the tarts. Anyway, all that to say that we had a lot of leftover tart shells, even though we made so many. And so I was thinking, since we're doing breakfast and I had tart shells in my freezer, why don't we make some mini quiches? Mm -hmm. They would be perfect, grab and go. My kids are gonna love being able to like just take a few out at a time and take them on their way to work or to school. And so that's why we're doing this today. Um, you can put in like quiche is quiche. You can put in whatever, kind of whatever you have, like empty your fridge into your quiche. Yeah, you, <laughs> yes you can. Um, you could do like onion and cheese. Today we're gonna do spinach and cheese and ham and you could do just ham. I have quiche bites that you make it with Bisquick mm -hmm. and actually they do freeze. Um, and, and they're just little balls that you pop in your mouth and they, you can make them with ham or bacon and I like to do mine with bacon usually, but the ham is nice too. You can just kind of make and anything you do into yours quiche. With feta. Uh, yes, I sometimes will make quiche with feta, especially with the spinach. I think they go really nice together. Mm -hmm. Or broccoli. You are allergic to broccoli, so there's no broccoli quiche at your house ever. Nope. But broccoli is common in quiche, and broccoli cheddar quiche is just like. Yes, and you can do mushroom, red pepper, like mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. You might not want to get like super weird and I don't know what would be considered super weird. Eggplant like, quiche. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you want like ground beef quiche. That sounds terrible. I don't think it's quiche anymore. I think <laughs> no. we're getting into like then it's something else, right? Yeah, then it's like cheeseburger tarts or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> these ones Coming are going to be... soon to you, <laughs> cheeseburger tarts. I am a bit obsessed with the tarts. <laughs> you are, and sometimes we make cheeseburger lots of things. We have cheeseburger quesadillas now. Cheeseburger sliders, cheeseburger, yes. um, cheeseburger pie, or no, yeah. Oh yeah, you have cheeseburger pie. 
That's good. We have all kinds that of cheeseburger things. That is good. <laughs> so, yes. not cheeseburger, but we're going to do ham and spinach and Swiss cheese. And yeah. all I did is I took our regular quiche recipe and um, in our Freezer Meals 101 Club, which is where you can create your meal plans, your shopping list, your prep list, and your printable labels, um, you can also change the serving size for things. So since... So you could make it for seven teenage boys? <laughs> you could. <laughs> Since I'm scaling this one down a bit, down from like two giant quiches to just these little mini quiches, I just can toggle the recipe down and you know use less eggs, less cheese, less all the things. Right. So that's what we're gonna do today. And we're actually going to bake these and then when they're done, we're gonna allow them to cool completely before we transfer them into the freezer bag. You could freeze them prior to baking, but the thing here is that because they're mini, I don't want to have to like reheat them. Like none of my kids want to be baking. Nobody's their baking. In the morning. Quiche. Yeah, no, 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 no. I you want to grab and go. Yes. So in a bowl, you're gonna mix together your eggs, some salt, bit of heavy cream. And in this case, we're using spinach and ham. We're just using deli ham, but you could use leftover ham if you prefer, and just um, cube that. And then some Swiss cheese that's shredded. Once we whisk all of that together, then we're gonna pour it into our frozen tart shells. Once they're fully baked, we're gonna allow them to cool completely, and then we're going to add them to our freezer bag, get all the air out, and get them into the freezer so they're the perfect little grab and go breakfast. Now this next recipe is one that I have been making for years and years, like probably at least a decade, and you have never had it. I have never had it. Uh, when we get together and make our freezer meals, we almost always just concentrate on dinners, really. Yes. And so when she's been doing freezer meals with a lot of breakfasts or snacky things, I seldom have them because I just, we make the dinners and that's what I take home. And at your house, you'll sometimes make your own snacks or lunches or breakfast things yeah. to go in the freezer, but we don't usually like get together to do those things. Right. Uh, but now that we're showing you, we are. Yeah, so and now that we're filming it, I get to try your granola. But here's the thing, there's coconut in this granola. So I'm not gonna eat the granola. But we can make a separate <laughs> one for Christie's family that doesn't have coconut in it because the beauty of this recipe, it's my homemade freezer granola. You can find the recipe for this at freezermeals101.com or in the description below and you can customize it. You can see how easy it is because today we're even swapping out some ingredients just based on what we had on hand. Yep. We didn't happen to have sunflower seeds and I wasn't gonna run to the store just to get one thing. So we're using pumpkin seeds and that'll be just fine. And if you're like Christy and hate coconut. <laughs> I would instead probably, I wouldn't use like a whole thing of hemp seeds or a whole thing of like an equal amount of flax seed. I would probably do half and half and, mm -hmm. and combine them because then it's just something different to put in. It's just more, more good things to put in there. And yeah, I'm not a coconut fan. If you have been here a while, you definitely know that. So that is the nice thing about freezer meals. Very customizable. Mm -hmm. And this recipe, I feel like it's one of those no fail ones. Like it's like you can sort of like throw just whatever you have in the pantry in and it'll taste good. Well, I can't guarantee it'll taste good. Don't throw your ravioli in here, but. <laughs> Liquid smoke, out. <laughs> yes. Just granola type ingredients. But okay, the great thing about this recipe is what I like to do is because we're going to do this without baking it when we make it today. And so when you have it, you're baking it to have fresh granola. Now, I am excited about that because I've never had fresh granola. I have really only ever purchased it or like had it, you know, at the breakfast bar at a hotel, mm -hmm. like it, you know, when you get the complimentary breakfast. So I'm excited about that part. It's so nice because, I don't know if you've noticed, but store-bought granola is super expensive mm -hmm. right now. Oh yeah, yeah. This is so much better. And I mean, like, I get it. Nuts can be expensive, but if you catch that sale. 
And if you buy things in the bulk section or at a bulk store, then the ingredients for this granola is going to be a fraction of the cost of what store-bought granola is gonna cost you, which is so nice, but also you can customize it. Yes, and granola is so versatile. You can put it with just about any kind of fruit. You can put it with yogurt. I sometimes put mine with kefir. Have you ever had kefir? Yes, and, and it would go nice. It is really nice with granola. If you aren't familiar with it, kefir is a fermented dairy product. And so it, it kind of effervesces in your mouth. <laughs> Effervesces in it, your mouth. Well, yes. it does. Like, right? I just love the description. You know, it's like it's like kombucha or whatever, which I have actually never had, but they're it's fermented as well. And so there's something in the fermentation process that's supposed to be really good for you. So I've had kefir, and it is lovely with granola. And then you could make this even healthier. It's already healthy. Yeah. But then you know, and you can put some sliced strawberries or fresh blueberries on yeah. top. It's just so nice. And because I like that whole like fresh baked aspect of this, I do mine in smaller bags. That mm -hmm. way you're just gonna bake it like one batch at a time and just use as much as you need. You could, if you prefer, you can put it all in a large bag and then you can bake it all together. It'll take several trays if you do it that way, which is totally fine. But the thing about that is that it freezes after it's baked as well. Yes, yeah, so you can like really keep granola forever. <laughs> In a large bowl, you're going to mix together your oats, your almonds, your sesame seeds, your sunflower seeds, or in our case, we have our pumpkin seeds today, your coconut, cranberries, and cinnamon. You're gonna mix that all around in your bowl, and then on the stove, you're going to mix together in a pot your oil, some honey, some water, vanilla, and some salt. You're going to bring that slowly to a boil, uh, probably stirring on occasion, and then you're going to drizzle that over your oat mixture and you're going to fold that in nicely until all of your oats are covered in that beautiful sauce. Now, here is the part where you want to cool it and throw it into your bags and get it into your freezer to freeze. Now, when you are freezing anything in your freezer, you wanna make sure that all of the excess air is out of the bag. You don't want condensation in there. You want to use a good quality freezer bag. Then when you go to cook this, you're gonna take out your bag, you're gonna lay it out on a cookie sheet, and you're just gonna bake it. 275 for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending how crunchy you like it. Charlotte likes hers crunchy. I do. And then, then you're going to like add your fixings, your kefir and your strawberries and, and all your goodies. And, yes, mm -hmm. it's good. Now, one of the reasons that we're doing this video today is that one of my oldest sons is actually moving out soon. I'm a little bit sad about it, but also really happy for him and excited for him and it's kind of a funny story he bought a place like i think in january mm -hmm. and we are many 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 months later and he has not moved out <laughs> so I, it's I, like a teaser hey like <laughs> i think i'm making it too comfortable for my kids at home because they don't seem to move out and sometimes they come back if they do move out and bring extras with them so i think you've gained yeah along the way <laughs> um a failure to launch <laughs> right. you know there's a whole movie about that it's not the same situation but it is kind of the same situation <laughs> I think I may cook too well because they do appreciate the dinners and they do appreciate the grab and go snacks and lunches and breakfasts and I, mm -hmm. I know that that's part of it because we've talked to one of our other sons about maybe moving out sometime in the next few months and that's been one of his things is like, but your food and I'm like, you can come home for supper like every single day but then, you know, maybe like after have, you do dishes. <laughs> like have your stuff <laughs> somewhere else and sleep somewhere else, you know, because you're very adult and everything. Or let me teach you how to make freezer meals. Totally. You which know. I also have started to do is like teach them a little bit of how to cook and how to make their favorite recipes. Mm -hmm. So for this particular son who is, you know, the reason he hasn't moved out truly is because he's been fixing up the new place. So he did floors there and painting and now he's putting in baseboards and he has to, and he has to still put in the appliances. So there's still like 
a little bit of work to be done, so he's not moving out tomorrow or anything, but that's why it has taken him so long. Right. And then, you thought you still had a little more time. The conversation this morning, he said, oh yeah, I think I'm gonna move this weekend, and you're like, you're what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, this has been like four or five months coming, and like now suddenly you're just gone? Um, and like, I need to put this in context. He's about 17 minutes from us, like he's not moving far and he'll be back all the time. I'm yes. sure that, you know, we will see him often at like multiple times a week, I'm sure. I'm sure. So it's not like a tragedy. This is, and kids should grow up and move out and that's the way of things. Yes, it is. But it is, as a mom, it's a little bit difficult to like do that whole letting go thing That's but hard i'm happy for him uh, uh we're the neighbor and we're totally happy for him <laughs> they actually gave him the couches that he's oh yes he has with. our couches it was time for us to get new furniture and we're like who do we know that needs furniture yes we will give it to him and that's very okay we're glad that it lives on because they were good couches they were they were not expensive couches. They were secondhand when we got them. They are perfect for somebody moving into their new place. Absolutely. And they match. <laughs> He's got, you know, better off than most. He, he has my mom's matches. dishes. He does. <laughs> does he's been collecting and he's the kind of I want to say kid but he's not a kid he's 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 a full-grown adult full-grown man <laughs> um, yes but he's the kind of person that is not like he's not the least bit materialistic he's very much like I'm just so happy and grateful and thankful for anything and so he didn't even ask like what color are the dishes or what <laughs> not at all they were and they were like a wedding set uh, from my mom not like the good china but like like just good, a good set of dishes and there's about a million of them. And she had bought new pots and pans, I don't know, maybe a few years ago. And then when she was moving from her place to downsize into her condo, she's like, well, I guess I'll use these pots and pans now. You can give these to Charlotte's son. And I said, you know, mom, these old pots and pans that you got for your wedding have never done a thing to you wrong. You know exactly how they cook. You know exactly what you're going to get out of them. Do you really think now is a good time for you to change your entire <laughs> pots and pans set to these new ones that you've never used, that you are going to be in a new stove and a new kitchen and new pots and pans? And I said, you know, maybe they would be the best ones to give away. And she said, I think you are absolutely <laughs> right. So he has brand new pots and pans from yes, my mom. He does. Because, lucky guy. Lucky guy, because I'm like, I think this is a bad idea. <laughs> and so in his, like, building up his hope chest over the years, you know, he's gotten some donations. Yes. And we have, for years and years, given our kids, like, no, I don't want this to sound bad, because we didn't mean it as a hint, but we've started at Christmas, we filled our stockings with a lot of Hope Chest things. Oh, a waffle maker, thanks, Mom. Right. <laughs> and so we do have kids that have gotten, like, mixing bowls, pots and pans, that's like all of our kids have, like, their can openers, their pizza cutters, their spatulas, like, all of the measuring spoons from years and years of like what's in their stockings. We kind of awesome. start that when they're about like 14. Again, not as a hint, but like, because we know that stuff gets really expensive if you have to buy it all at once. Right. So we just sort of set them up slowly. And so two Christmases ago, um, sorry, this is becoming this really long story, but stick with me for just a second. We'll get to the recipe. We'll get to the smoothies. Um, eventually. <laughs> the stuff won't melt, don't worry. <laughs> His sister, so our kids draw names, because we've got seven kids, so, and then now there's starting to be some spouses, and so, like, they draw names among the people, so that they don't have to buy, like, you know, seven or eight or nine gifts, and they can just right. buy the one. And so one of our daughters got his name two Christmases ago and she was trying to figure out what to get him. And it's a $50 limit, so it, you know, it kind of limits you in what you can get, which is good too, because some of our kids are still youngish and broke. <laughs> but she got him a, what's that called? Magic bullet. A magic bullet. Because at the time, every single day he made himself a smoothie. Right. 
So he has this magic bullet in his hope chest that has never been opened. It's still in the box. <laughs> so when I was planning out today's video, I said to him, you know, how would you feel about some smoothie bags to take to your new place? And you could try that magic bullet out. And he's thrilled. He's thrilled. So these, the recipe for this actually makes like a bigger size, probably it's two servings. So we're going to make smaller bags for him. Yeah, we're gonna make some that are gonna stay at our house because some of my other kids and my husband love smoothies and so we're gonna make those. Yeah, they make like more than two full cups. Yeah, they do, they do. They're, they're pretty beefy. Um, and I know at our house, if somebody says, I'm having a smoothie, we just kind of say, who else wants a smoothie? Because if you're gonna make one, you get right at it and you make a jug of it and then everybody can have some and it's really nice. And yeah. so this is great to just have in the freezer and then you can say, who wants a smoothie? And it's not even like, you're not even putting yourself out much. It's like, mm, <laughs> dump. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're not going to be like chopping the things yeah. because you already did it, you know, ahead of time. And so we're going to make some family sized yeah. bags and we're going to make some little mini bags that'll fit in his magic bullet mm -hmm. that he can take with him. So you'll see how we do that. But I just want to talk quickly about what we put in the smoothie bags. I have been doing this for years also, and I add some, I think, sort of strange ingredients into my smoothie bags, but they're all really good. So today we're doing spinach, bananas, um, frozen avocado, frozen rhubarb, and usually we have frozen rhubarb that is like homegrown, because Christy and I both grow rhubarb. Right. And we just um, slice it up and get it into freezer bags. So we usually have it in our freezer, but I've actually used all of mine. Yeah, and I don't have year. any right now either. So we're gonna actually use store-bought rhubarb, but then we have some pineapple chunks, uh, three berry blend. So it's like uh, raspberry, blueberry, blackberry. Then we have a different berry blend that was massively on sale at Costco. And so it's like got cherry, strawberry, bl blueberry, all the things. Um, mango, we've got cubed frozen mango. It was less expensive at this time of year to buy most of the fruits frozen, but we do have some fresh kiwi that we're gonna be adding and some fresh blueberries in addition to the frozen blueberries because I had to buy blueberries anyway for our next recipe. <laughs> so, um, but in the past, other things that I've added into my smoothie bags are roasted beets. So good. I disagree. Oh, they're it so makes good. It, everything tastes like dirt. I everything like tastes like it. beets. I don't <laughs> like it. And I like beets. I can sit and eat beets. I like beet salads. I like pickled beets. I don't like beets in smoothies. Sorry. Not sorry. So if you're like Christy, then please do not put beets in your smoothie bags. It sounds like I'm the picky one today. And <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not really the picky one. <laughs> I'm allergic to bananas, right. so I can't have those. Does that make you feel better? Yes. <laughs> I'm not happy that you have an allergy to bananas because they're pretty fantastic. <laughs> and something else I'll tell you about bananas. I am a smoothie person. I like a protein shake. Mm -hmm. When you are getting older, <laughs> you must increase your protein. And so say all the perimenopause experts. And so I came across somebody in a Facebook group that said that they take their bananas when they're like super on sale and they'll buy a whole case of them and they will peel them and slice them in half, like, like in half that way, not, yep. and then they'll put them in a freezer bag and well, they'll put them on a tray to freeze and then transfer them to a freezer bag. And then that can go into their smoothies. Mm -hmm. So I use a full banana with my protein shake. So then when I have a lot of them, I can just go grab two, my two halves, throw it in there and my magic bullet. I have the little cups for the ninja, right? Yeah. It does the same thing and it's perfect. So bananas actually freeze really well. They do. And the other thing that I do for my smoothies, I do sometimes add right into the smoothie bags, things like your hemp, your flax, those kind of things. But I also like to, in a separate bag, um, do some frozen yogurt. So I will just use ice cube trays, fill them with yogurt, and then I will freeze them. Once they're fully frozen, I pop them out of the ice cube tray and put them in your freezer bags because you can just take two of those cubes mm -hmm. and add it into your smoothie and then you've got the yogurt in there too. So it's just a little hack. That's so smart. And <laughs> That's and good. I find with yogurt, I don't know about you, but 
our family, it kind of goes in waves. Us too. And so sometimes... You buy all the yogurt and then they just demolish it and then you buy all the yogurt again and then it sits there for a month. Yes, and then you're throwing away yeah. yogurt that's expired. And so for me, this is a great way that if I notice this is one of the times that my kids do not seem to be going through a yogurt phase, then I'll be like, well, I don't want this to expire. I'm gonna you know, get it in the trays, freeze it, and so then I don't waste the money. Totally. So a few years ago in like our mom's group that we're in on Facebook, Somebody said, hey, does anybody know how to make like this certain smoothie from Booster Juice? And this other mom was like, yeah, I used to work here. Here's how you make it. And so it had like guava juice and it had like um, passion fruit juice, which is actually hard to find. It was the Strawberry Sunshine, which is my mm -hmm. son's all-time favorite smoothie from that store. And so I'm like, oh, I'll write that down. And somebody said, well, what else do you got? And she read like Eight of, she printed them out. She just typed them out and there was probably eight or ten nice. different smoothies. So I wrote them all down and I, I have them in my recipe cards. And so, but they do sometimes require, like, these are very, you know, kind of you can do whatever. If you want the certain flavor, you have to do what they want. And sometimes they want some weird ingredients. They're out there. Yeah. I have them. So if you ever want, you know. <laughs> to have customized booster juice smoothies. <laughs> yep, I have the underground on the booster juice. <laughs> So for these, we're gonna put about three cups of fruit or fruit and vegetables in each of our family-sized bags. And then, of course, we're going to want to get as much air as we can out of that bag like we talked about earlier. If you have less air in there, you're gonna extend the life of everything in your freezer. And then we are going to just freeze those as they are. Now for my son's smaller bags, we're gonna put like a cup or a, like a cup and a quarter worth of the fruits and vegetables. So it's gonna be like very tiny little bags there, but they'll give him a good start on the smoothies because when you go to make these, you actually add, for the family size ones, you're gonna add two cups of milk or fruit juice and then you can add some yogurt if you want. And for these little mini ones, you're gonna add about a cup or three quarters of a cup of milk or fruit juice. He's lactose intolerant, so he will go with the fruit juice. And But did you know you can buy lactose-free yogurt? So he still likes the yogurt cubes in his. So I'll be sure to give him some yogurt cubes as well. These are so simple to get done. Other ideas of what you could include are cranberries, peaches, grapes, kale, broccoli, clementines, oranges, cantaloupe, and honeydew. So any combination that you want of your favorite fruits and some vegetables will freeze really well in these smoothie bags and then it'll make those mornings so much easier. One of the best breakfast foods, hands down, has gotta be muffins. Yes. It doesn't get more grab and go than that. It really doesn't. Um, there's entire industries built on just muffins and a variety of muffins. And it's one of the only ways I can get my oldest daughter to eat fruits or vegetables because oh, right. she will eat zucchini in a zucchini muffin but has never like swallowed a piece of zucchini she'll eat pumpkin like she loves pumpkin muffins right and i it helps that they have butterscotch chips in them it's my grandma's recipe they're pretty amazing um but those kinds of things i can actually get her to eat a fruit or vegetable if it's in a muffin right so you know or like applesauce in a muffin she'll eat that so they're also kind of a healthy, sneaky thing. <laughs> we love sneaky health around here. <laughs> it's true. We may or may not in the past have like, you know, blended up a pasta sauce that had some zucchini and spinach and, you know, things in it. She has had zucchini in her mouth, folks. <laughs> she might not know it. She doesn't know it. But no, she does. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These breakfast muffins are, it's a new recipe to us, so we're just trying it and we're tweaking it. I looked on the internet for breakfast muffin recipes and I was like, oh, don't like that. Don't do yeah, that sounds okay. I like that part of that one. I like, you know, so we're kind of cobbling this together. And when it comes to baking, it's more science, whereas I like cooking because you can just be like, oh, toss some of that. Oh, let's, this much. <laughs> like, yes. Lots more. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Right? And so 
they might not work because they're a little bit, yeah, you know, of a guess. Although <laughs> but, I know some people bake that way. And I think it's a case of they've been baking so long, they can just do it. Right. Um, but you know, you don't start out that way. Always and start with the, that is not me. So yeah. I'm like, I, I have no promises as to how these muffins are going to turn out and we're going to be the guinea pigs and we'll test them and you know, maybe they'll be amazing and fantastic or maybe we'll have to go back to the drawing board. But I like that they've got the oatmeal in mm -hmm. them. They've got the blueberries and they have cinnamon. I was saying to Christy, like as we're gathering ingredients, we're using a lot of cinnamon today. <laughs> Yes. I think it's because cinnamon is homey mm -hmm. and nothing makes you like just feel good as cinnamon. Yeah. My girlfriend in Saskatoon, Anne Marie, she said her dad always puts like a little teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon in pancakes. Oh, that's and, and it's just, just a smidgen. It's just enough to make you just go, ah. Right. And he actually makes really good pancakes. Well, and I had heard that realtors will advise you to mm. put cinnamon sticks in a bit of water on a, in a small pot and turn it on low and just put the pot lid off to the side a little bit so that that smell wafts through the house as people are coming to view your house because then they're more likely to buy it because it feels like home. It feels like home. It's a homey smell. So um, I'm good with all the cinnamon and I like cinnamon. It's good. It's going to be great. When it comes to making muffins for the freezer, there's two ways you can go about this. I'm going to pop a video right up there. It's a really old video and you'll see my kitchen prior to the little reno that we did. Uh, but you'll also see me very uncomfortable on camera. So it might be fun just to go watch that. But anyway, it is about how to freeze muffins with the two ways. And I think I've got at least three or four muffin recipes in there that are really good but you can freeze muffins either by baking them first and then allowing them to cool completely putting them in a freezer bag or a freezer safe container and getting them in your freezer and that works really well and that's what we're going to be doing today but another way that you can freeze muffins is you can actually align your muffin tin with the cupcake liners put the batter in freeze the muffin tin once the dough is frozen, then you can transfer just those raw little muffiny things into a freezer bag that's like sciencey, right? Little muffiny things, whatever. The, the muff <laughs> but, well, they're muffin cups. Yes. And then you transfer them into your freezer bag and get those in your freezer. And you know, you would put a label with the cooking instructions on there so that when you, you know, have unexpected company or it's going to be like Christmas morning or some kind of Sunday morning and you want fresh baked muffins, you can actually pop those back into a muffin tray, put them in the oven. Now you do want to allow them to thaw quite a bit first. I experimented a lot with it and it worked much, much better if they were fully thawed. You will read that you can do them from frozen. You can, but they will not fluff up as much in my experimentation. So I would just allow them to thaw fully and then you cook them just like you normally would. And then you have that like fresh baked muffin smell and feel and all the things. And the cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so baked right in. you can do that if you prefer. We're going to bake ours today because again, this is more for our kids to be able to, or us, to be able to do grab and go snacks or breakfasts. So we don't want to have to like wait for them to bake. Yeah, <laughs> no. Can you imagine heating your whole oven up just to make for one like muffin? one muffin? No, 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 no. For these healthy breakfast muffins, we are going to first combine our wet ingredients in a bowl. We're going to add our milk, our vegetable oil, our honey and our egg and we are going to whisk it or beat it with beaters until they are well combined. In another bowl, we are going to mix our dry ingredients together. We're going to mix in flour, oats, baking soda, baking powder, and cinnamon. We're going to add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients and combine them until they're fully combined with no visible lumps. Then we're going to take our fresh blueberries and we're going to sprinkle them with a dusting of flour until they're coated. And then we're going to gently fold them into our muffin mixture so that they don't sink to the bottom and they don't get it all blueberry colored. Then we're going to fill our muffin cups. Now you can spray your tin or 
In Charlotte's case, we have a very fancy stoneware muffin, um, a muffin pan that has slowly built up a patina where it is non-stick now. So we're going to add our muffins into our muffin tin with our scoop and you can sprinkle some oats on top if you want and then we're going to bake these in the oven for 15 minutes at 375. When they come out you want to make sure that you allow them to cool before you put them into your freezer bag because the warm muffins will cause condensation inside the bag and we definitely don't want that before we freeze it because that is also contributing to your frost to your freezer burn so allow them to cool then throw them into the bag and freeze them. Thank you for joining us in this foray into breakfast freezer meals. We have a huge variety here, mm -hmm. both grab and go things, smoothies, um, like casseroles for right? brunches. Um, we have a lot and we actually like off camera made two of those French toast casseroles so that Christie's family can have one and our family can have one. And this Sunday, I'm thinking I'm gonna make ours, so. You know, I'm going to go visit my family home this weekend. Maybe I should take one there and we can have breakfast at my brother's house. That would be really nice. That Don't you love it when guests bring their own food? <laughs> well, I was already thinking, I'm like, you know, those muffins would probably be pretty good for breakfast too, to take with. Yeah. You know, I think that's a kind thing to do. And especially, it's, I mean, it's my brother and we're staying at his house. So I think it's nice to contribute. Absolutely. Then he'll want to have us back. <laughs> I do want to get invited I would back. Like to, I would like to be invited back. So I always take something little. And, and actually, I do take a lot of freezer meals. L like, not last year, but the year before, my dad had passed away. And so we spent a ton of time at my brother's house. Just, it was the place to meet and the place to be. And so I took him a lot of freezer meals. And he doesn't mind cooking. It's just him and his wife now. And he, he's fine with it. But when it's a bunch of people, I'm like, can I just take care of this for you and he's he's glad to not have to shoulder it all and even just the not having to think about what to make right is probably the biggest part of that uh, that's my favorite part of freezer meals <laughs> mine too <laughs> so now we won't have to think about what to make for breakfast mm -hmm. or brunches for a little while and i kind of did some quick math and if you've been watching our videos for a while you'll know that math is neither of our strong suits <laughs> So I could be really off on this, but I just kind of went based on the servings of each recipe. And I kind of think that today, not even including doubling the French toast mm -hmm. casserole, because we made so many smoothie bags and we ended up with 24 of the mini quiches, and like we just made a lot, sort of batch cooked a lot of these things. We are ending up with somewhere between like 80 and 90 servings. Wow. <laughs> Unless you're a teenage boy, and then it was probably like 60. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. It, <laughs> we'll have to check in with her and see how it went. I'm very curious. To see how the French toast casserole, how many of the each how of many French the, toast casseroles fed. <laughs> Maybe she would have to make like a, a whole one for each kid. I don't know, but I, <laughs> I'm happy for her. I hope... I hope, it, I'm sure it'll go great. Those of you who have teenage boys, have been a teenage boy or no teenage boys, you probably know what we're talking about here and we both have raised teenage boys and yeah, it's uh, yeah. no joke. <laughs> they so can eat. They can eat. Um, the joke at my house growing up, my cousins, I was the only girl cousin and all these boy cousins and my grandma would make like a pot of mashed potatoes because my one cousin you know have you heard the hollow leg yes. he must have a hollow leg well yeah his is just full of mashed potatoes <laughs> right yeah. there's differences I'm sure there are girls that can eat a lot and there's boys that eat a little bit like I'm sure that that happens I like yes for sure but in my experience with my kids like you've seen it my girls eat like birds birds it's just that they're kind of grazers and they just eat like yeah. little bits and and then they're full and I've taught them like listen to your bodies and all that. Sure. And, oh my goodness, and my boys just <laughs> never stop. No, sometimes they just take a deep breath like a big inhale and it's all gone. <laughs> You know, when we were getting the ingredients ready for this, Charlotte's like, I had ham in here. If it's not here, I know exactly who took it. <laughs> but it was there and it was okay. And I said, I have extra Easter ham at home from in my freezer if we need it. We found the ham, it was okay. But I also knew exactly who would have taken exactly it. Exactly who. And <laughs> the funny thing is like, 
I also was thinking like in that muffin recipe, I think orange juice would have been really nice, like just oh, to brighten yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. But I went and looked for my orange juice and it has disappeared. <laughs> Nothing lasts long in this house. The way it goes sometimes, teenage boys. And these are like grown boys, yeah, they're not even teenage, teenage boys. boys yes. So it's all, no matter who you have in your house or if it's just you, these are going to be so nice to have as a grab and go breakfast. Now, if it is just you and you wanted to try that French toast casserole, there are these foil trays that you can buy that come with lids. Mm -hmm. They're very small. And actually there's a few different sizes. Yeah, so there if there's two of you that, you know, if you're a couple or they're roommates and you want to use like a little bit of a larger one or whatever, but if you, uh, instead of taking that big thing in your bowl and spooning it into a large bag, just spoon it into a whole bunch or, I mean, I think it would get you at least four of the really oh, yeah. tiny ones, maybe more, and then you can bake them up fresh on the day you mm -hmm. want to have them. That would be so perfect. Yeah. And you don't have to miss out just because you're living on your own. Like there are ways that you can adapt all of these, just like we adapted the smoothie bags. We're gonna pop a video right there to some grab and go snack and lunch ideas because you could build up your freezer to include, of course, dinners, which we have a ton of recipes and videos about that but you could also fill it up with breakfast things like we've made today and those grab and go snack slash lunches so that you never have to think about any meals ever again. Thanks so much for joining us today and um, a breakfast to you. Happy cooking. Okay, I have a funny story about the mini quiche. <laughs> I was thinking of just ignoring this in the video and letting you think that they turned out amazing but i didn't feel like that would be totally honest now the quiche part is amazing this like this part with the egg tastes so so good however <laughs> okay what happened is we made them baked them we were allowing them to cool before we put them in the bags and christy was like those look so good do you mind if I grab one? And I was like, no, let's both try them. So she popped it in her mouth and she was like, I was right, they are amazing. I popped it in my mouth and right away I was like, something is very wrong. Like, <laughs> this is not right. And you know, we've talked before about my palate versus Christy's palate, how like, I love the sweet tarts, but there's certain colors that I don't like because I don't like the flavors of and she didn't realize that the different colors are different flavors because her palette's just a little bit more like you know like this and we're all different so and lots of people are like that my my palette's a little bit more eh, picky or choosy uh, I don't know some might say refined but I'm gonna go with picky and so I notice things taste wise. So <laughs> popped this in my mouth and I was like, one of these things is not like the other. This, the tart shells that I said I had found in my freezer and I needed to get rid of them because I was making space because we were going to do a mega session, which we just finished. If you see behind me, you'll see. So we just, just finished like minutes ago, but I'm going to edit the breakfast video you're gonna see it right away. And I just, I couldn't let you believe that these mini quiches were good. The story is that these tarts, I didn't realize, but they're dessert tarts. So they have sugar in them and then they have like a sugar coating right on, <laughs> on the rim. So the quiche part tastes amazing. If you peel all the tart away, there's still actually some sugar from the tart that got onto the quiche. So again, my mouth was just like, good, but no, like if something isn't right. And that's what it is. So um, in the bag, and we just made these, um, it was like a bag and a half, I think that we ended up with or two bags full. And we just made these on Friday. It's today is Friday again. So a week ago and there's three left. One of my sons especially 
has been loving them. Maybe he likes it better because they're sugar. I don't know, but he's been grabbing them to take to work. Anyway, that's it. The actual quiche recipe is probably really good if you put it in a tart that isn't a dessert tart. <laughs>